welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. I am here today to answer your questions. And when I mean questions, I mean questions. We have a ton. I asked you guys to ask me anything you wanted to know about points versus calories. I would go over all of the details of your questions, answer them, give you tons and tons of information. So I thought, what better than a Q&A with a get ready with me? I have done one of these in the past where I answered questions about myself in general. So I'm gonna link that video down below for you guys. And it is under the playlist Q&A. So definitely check that out. So I'm back today with a calories versus points Q&A to answer all of the questions that you had. And I have a lot of them. So I'm gonna get ready. I'll share with you the products that I'm using. I am doing a very basic look today. I do have a Zoom call with my challenge group over on my Facebook. So I'm going to do a very basic look. We're not going to do any shadow. We're just going to do liner, lashes, and some face makeup. Call it a day. I am wearing the headbands here that I talked about in my favorites video. These are linked in my Amazon store. I'll put them down below. I love them. And of course, best dog mom ever shirt. So we are set, my friends, to do a really fun Q&A and get ready with me. So let's get started. <music> for this look of no makeup, but I thought it would be way fun to get ready with you guys. So the first thing I'm gonna be using is this beauty counter. This is the Instant Glow Illuminating Primer. So basically what this does is when you put it on your face, it gives your face this really beautiful glow. You guys know I love beauty counter because it's clean. It's a clean makeup and I'm all about clean products. So I've been using everything beauty counter as you know. I'm going to link everything I'm showing you guys today that I can find down below for you because I get a lot of questions on my makeup. You want lots of makeup tutorials, you wanna know what I use, so I'm gonna share that with you guys today. So let's jump into a couple of the questions. The first question is, what zero point foods do you recommend to bump up my calories? So if you are somebody that's not eating enough calories and you want to stay within your points but get a little extra calories, you can simply do that with zero point foods. So some of my favorites are the zero point proteins because it's a double whammy. You're getting protein, but you're also getting calories and things like chicken, fish, uh, turkey, ground turkey, those are pretty calorie dense for being zero points versus veggies and fruit. So you're getting that double whammy of calories and protein and it's just a good option. So maybe add an extra serving to your day, have a zero point protein or zero point food as a snack or even better, base all of your meals around zero points foods. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks, they should all contain zero point foods, which is zero points, but not zero calories. So it's a great way to up your calories and stay within your points. So next I'm going in with the Too Faced Do You Foundation, and then I just have a little makeup sponge here. This I like because it's a pump, so I usually do two pumps, and then I just go in and apply. The next question is tips on increasing protein, and if I'm looking down over here, it's because that's where my mirror is. So how do I increase my protein, and what are my recommendations for meals and snacks? So. Again, zero point foods, stick with those for good sources of protein. You guys know that some of my big go-to snacks are cottage cheese, which I absolutely am obsessed with. I love the good culture, and you get a really big dose of protein in that cottage cheese. Also, you could do yogurt. Yogurt is another great way to really get in some protein without having a lot of points and calories. So I really like the Siggy's 4%. That's actually one of my very, very favorite yogurts, but adding you know, full fat or high protein dairy as meals or snacks is a really good option. You can do things like meat sticks, even beef jerkies. You can add nuts because they have a little bit of protein. You can also add beans. If you're on blue or purple, beans have a little bit of protein too. So it's a great way to kind of boost up the protein. The next question I got was, what do you do when you're starving and you just can't get enough food. It doesn't matter what you eat, you just can't get enough. You guys, if you're starving, it's your body telling you that you need food. So just do your best to make good choices when you're feeling really, really hungry. Don't reach for the chips, the cookies, and the crackers. You know, reach for the zero point foods, the lower calorie foods, the higher protein foods. Reach for foods that are gonna keep you full. Focus on protein and focus on fat. Now, is that going to work every time? No. Sometimes we're just gonna be hungry, unfortunately. 
I've went to bed hungry before because I didn't want to eat anymore. I was where I wanted to be points and calorie wise. Sometimes we're just hungry and as women, we know when that time is and you just have to do your best to put your hunger at bay, but also continue on your weight loss journey and not hinder that by overeating. So next I'm going to use some CoverGirl concealer. This is just the clean matte concealer and I usually just will pop this under my eyes a little on my nose and kind of here above my lip. And then I'll blend that out with that same beauty blender as well. Next question is, what is your favorite protein brand? Well, I have a few. I will say that my all time be all end all favorite protein brand in the freaking world is Live Well. And you guys know, I don't like plant based protein. I've never liked plant based protein, but Live Well, Oh my goodness, you guys, it is so good. It does not have that chalky taste of regular plant protein. It is seriously so incredibly delicious. It's smooth. It's only one point, which I love that. I can't find a protein powder with good ingredients. That's that low of point. So I love Live Well. I have all the flavors. I have the regular unflavored, the chocolate, the vanilla, and the coconut. I love them all. Highly, highly recommend Live Well. I also love the Primal Kitchen Collagen line. They have collagen fuel that has about 11 grams of protein. So you guys know I like to put that in with the chocolate live well and make like a Reese's protein shake. So I really like that one. I also enjoy Tara's Whey, which is a great clean protein as well as the less naked whey protein, but those are going to be a little higher in points. Your lowest point protein that tastes the best is definitely live well. I used to eat devotion. Devotion is a fantastic protein. It's very, very good. It's great to bake with as well. They have angel food cake and chocolate brownie. I just don't eat it as much because it just doesn't have as clean of ingredients as I want. But if that is not a concern for you, highly recommend devotion and live well with Tara's way, less naked way, and Primal Kitchen Collagen Fuel as some backups. So for powder, I'm just using this CoverGirl Smoothers. I use the translucent medium. I'm not fancy. I literally use the sponge that comes with it and I just go ahead and put on the powder. This is a very translucent powder. It's not really gonna give my face any color at all. That's when I go in with bronzer and highlighter to give myself a little bit of color and glow. So the next question that I got is, how the heck are you eating all your calories because I feel so full? So I don't feel that way. To be completely honest with you, I was always hungry when I stuck with just my daily smart points and I, don't, I wasn't eating enough um, and that was the foods that I'm choosing. As I talked about, in my most recent video where I said, can you eat enough calories on WW to lose weight healthy and sustainably? And you can, it's just depending on the foods that you're choosing. So I know that I wasn't choosing the right foods and that's probably why I was really hungry, but there are days that I don't eat all of my calories because I'm just not hungry and I'm not going to eat if I'm not hungry. But to be honest with you, most days I have no problem eating all of my calories. So if you find that you are struggling with eating your calories, but you want to maintain your metabolism and you want to eat all your calories because you know that that's what's good for you to not only lose weight, but to be able to sustain that weight loss. I recommend adding in fats, adding in things like nut butters and avocados and things that are pretty calorie dense, but that are really good for you. So they're going to suck up all those calories, but they're going to leave you satisfied and full. Same goes with protein. Maybe instead of using a 96% lean ground beef, use a 90 or an 85%. It's going to be a lot more fat and calories. It's going to keep you full and it's going to help you reach your calorie goal without feeling overly stuffed. All right, for eyeliner, I'm just using this Elme Black Pearl Crayon liner. Like I said, I'm not doing any type of shadow. So I'm just going to line with this crayon liner before I put on my lashes. The next question is, I feel that goal weight times 12, which is Jordan Syed's philosophy for being in a calorie deficit, but losing weight slow and steady and sustainably without damaging your metabolism is too many calories. Is it okay to adjust that and still lose weight healthily? So I will tell you that I did have a conversation with Jordan on the phone. As I mentioned to you guys, I let you guys know that I did get to talk with him on the phone. We've texted a few times as well. And he so graciously offered me 30 days in his inner circle. And by being part of his inner circle, I have learned a few things. So his suggested calorie goal is goal weight times 12. However, that can be used for days that you're extremely active. So days that you're working out 30 minutes or more of intentional exercise on days that you're less active, you're still getting in some steps. I mean, you're probably 4,000 to 10,000 steps 
you can do your goal weight times 11. And on days that you're very, very sedentary, so people that have desk jobs that literally maybe only have two or 3,000 steps in a day just because they're stuck at a desk all day, you can go with goal weight times 10. And you're still going to be in a good calorie deficit. It's still, still sustainable, sustainable, and it still is a healthy way to lose weight. You're still going to see the weight come off and it's still going to be healthy and not damage your metabolism. So if you really struggle mentally with the goal weight times 12, try goal weight times 11 and then goal weight times 10 on days that you're not active at all. And you'll still lose weight. You'll still maintain your metabolism. And that's been great to know because there are days that sometimes I'm not very active and I will reduce my caloric intake a little bit. And then days that I'm jazzercising, you can bet I'm eating that goal weight times 12. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a wing on my eyelid before I put on my lashes. And this is just the Rimmel Exaggerate Liquid Black Liner. So the next question was, how do you increase your calories without eating junk food, without leaning towards junk? Like I mentioned, a great way to increase your calories is by adding in some extra fat and also by adding in some extra protein because protein overall is not a lot of calories for as much as you can have, but it keeps you full and it will help you get in your calories without leaning towards chips and crackers and cookies. Or on the flip side, you could treat yourself one day. If you're really under your calories and you're good on your protein, because as you know, we are strict on calories and protein. That's what I follow. That's what Jordan Syatt teaches. You want to make sure that you get your calories and you get your protein goal, the carbs and the fat, they, that doesn't really matter. So you could treat yourself. You could indulge in something that is a little more calorie dense that day. As long as you've reached your protein goal and you want to reach your calorie goal, maybe have something that you wouldn't normally be able to have because it's too many points or too many calories to get you to your calorie goal. And I'm not saying junk food. I'm saying maybe have a real piece of full fat cheese on your hamburger that night, or maybe make a homemade pizza and put a little extra cheese on there to try to reach your calorie goal. You don't have to have junk, but it's important that you get close to your caloric goal every single day. So before I put on my lashes, I always put on just some regular mascara. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara. This is like $8 hands down my favorite mascara before I ever did lashes or when I used the glue on strip lashes, this was my go-to mascara. I love it. So the next question is, should I eat breakfast even if I'm not hungry? So there is a lot of debate on breakfast. Is breakfast a necessity? Should you be eating breakfast every single day? Here's the, here's the deal with doing a lot of research and being in the inner circle, breakfast, whether you eat breakfast or not is irrelevant. If you're hungry, eat breakfast. If you're not, don't eat breakfast. Eat when you're hungry. It doesn't matter if you eat all of your calories at night. The bottom line is calories in versus calories out. It doesn't matter when throughout the day you're eating those calories. So if you're not hungry at breakfast, you guys, don't eat breakfast. Maybe have a cup of coffee or whatever the case may be. I know that some people don't actually eat breakfast. They just have like protein coffee, but you're still getting in calories and protein and you're getting your day started. But I say if you're not hungry, don't eat. Next is any suggestions for high protein, low fat, because I'm always over my fat for the day. So I do not track my fat. I mean, I look at it in the Lose It app, like I pay attention to it, but it's not a macro that I'm concerned with. It's not something that I try to hit or not hit every single day. Most days, honestly, I'm over my fat as well. But fat keeps you full, good fat especially. Things like nut butters and avocados. So if you are really concerned about fat, you're going to have to lean towards less fatty food. So you're gonna have to pick leaner cuts of meat. You're going to have to really steer clear of things like avocados or nut butters or have those in very, very small moderation so you're not going over your fat. But if you're going to follow a Jordan Syed approach, you're more concerned about calories and protein. Speaking of Jordan Syed, I will link his channel down below for you guys. You should definitely, definitely check him out. So now I'm gonna get ready for my lashes. So you guys know my love of Tori Bell. They're the best magnetic lashes in the world. They are so easy to use. You, a lot of you have reached out and asked me how easy they are. So I'm gonna show you. This is the Tori Bell liner and magnetic mascara combo. So one end is liner, one end is 
mascara. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on a coat of the liner. So this is what the liner here looks like. I'm going to put that on. You let this fully dry in between coats and we're going to do two coats. So I'm going to start with one and answer some questions while it's drying and then we'll put on the second coat. So the next question is, I have heard that your body can only process so much protein in one meal. Is that correct? So I didn't know the answer to this question because as you guys know, I am not a dietitian or a nutritionist or a doctor. I am simply someone who is on a weight loss journey who was concerned about eating enough calories every day. So I did a little bit of research into this and what I'm finding is as always when you look things up or use Dr. Google on the internet, the information is a little bit conflicting. So I was finding on average or the majority of what I was finding remained kind of consistent and that's that your body can process 25 to 30 grams of protein per meal apparently if you eat more than that your body discards it and you know what i'm talking about so that's what i found on the internet but i also found information that it didn't matter how much protein you ate per meal so i say do what works for you there are days that I will have 40 grams of protein in one meal, but I would say on average, I shoot for 30 to 35 grams because if I'm doing that, then I'm able to hit my protein goal every single day if I'm eating the 30 to 35 grams per meal and then sprinkling protein in in my snacks as well. So you're just gonna have to do your own research, maybe ask your doctor or your nutritionist about that because like I said, Dr. Google gives conflicting information. So the next question, we're still drying, is which is a healthier way to lose weight, WW or calorie counting? I don't think that there's a healthier way. I think you have to do what works for you. If you struggle with points, if you struggle with getting to your calorie goal within your smart points and you're using your weeklies, remember we talked about how important it is to use your weeklies to hit your calorie goal. If you're still struggling, then give calorie counting a try and vice versa. If you're calorie counting and you hate it, Give WW a try. Do what works for you. I don't think one or the other is better. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop on that second coat of liner. And the next question is, how can I reach my calorie goal but not go over my smart points? So I'm gonna direct you guys right back to the video I just put out about is it possible to eat enough calories on WW? Because I talked extensively about this in that video. In order for you to stay within your points, but reach your calorie goal, you have to focus on the foods that you're eating. You have to work with the zero point foods. You have to use those as the basis of your meals. And you have to be mindful of how much processed packaged snacks you're eating because they don't have a lot of calories, but they have a lot of points. So I am not going to go into that here in too much detail. I'm just going to direct you to that video by linking it down below for you. So the next question is how do you eat so much protein? Example, your goal weight time times one and not go over your calories. So I also have mentioned that there's a couple different approaches that you can take to your protein goal as far as Jordan is concerned. You can do goal weight times one or you can do goal weight times seven. If you struggle to reach your protein goal and stay within your calories at the goal weight times one, do the goal weight times 0.7. So for me, I have a protein range. I took my goal weight times seven and I took my goal weight times one. And every day I try to get between that range. So for me, that's about 120 grams of protein to 165 grams of protein every day. I never fall below 120 and usually I'm right around 130 to 150 in my protein. I've been known to hit the 165, but on average I fall kind of right in the middle. So take the goal weight times 7.7 if you feel like the goal weight times one is just a little bit too much protein and you're struggling to get that and stay within your calories. I'm going to go ahead now and use the mascara side and I'm literally only going to put this at the very, very base of my lashes to help with the lashes to stick, the artificial lashes. So I'm literally just going to put that right at the very, very base. And I'm gonna give this a couple more minutes to dry. So I did get a couple of other questions that were similar. We're at the bottom guys of page one. One was tips to increase your protein and is goal weight times one too much protein? I kind of answered those already for you guys. And again, I'm gonna direct you to some other videos that I've already done by linking them in the description box for you. So the lashes that I'm using today, and you guys can see we did a 
very neutral eye look. I have zero eyeshadow on. It's just liner and a little bit of mascara. Is I'm gonna use the Tori Bell in the selfie. I love these. So these are a little bit more bold, dramatic look. If you're someone going for a little more natural look, highly recommend date night, ladies night, nine to five. Nature Bunny is very, very natural. Literally doesn't look like you have mascara at on at all. It just kind of fills in your lashes. If you want a bolder look, you can go with the selfies. I love these. These are my favorite. So I'm going to show you guys how to use these because it is so incredibly easy. So the next question is, what is the best app to track calories in and are there any free apps? So there are several free calorie tracking apps. Is Lose It. I use that app. I actually paid for the premium version, but there is also a free version on the Lose It app as well. My Fitness Pal. You can also use Spark People. You can use iTrack Bytes. A lot of these have free versions. It's just whether or not you need the features of the premium version whether you go to the premium version or not so for me because that is my primary way of tracking I did buy the premium version of the lose it app so let's put lashes on so this is what they look like I'll show you guys so you can see that they do have like the little magnets they're very natural looking. They're just long and bold and it, they go on so easy so all I'm going to do is position it on my eye where I want it and I'm just going to lay it down and I have lashes. It is literally that simple. And then what I do is kind of give it a little bit of a push to make sure that it's on there snugly. And then you're gonna take and you're gonna squeeze. So you're gonna basically squeeze your natural lashes with the strip lashes. And you guys, I am not kidding when I tell you that these lashes will withstand a windstorm. I can wear these lashes and blow dry my hair and they don't move. And they're that simple to put on. You don't have to mess with sticky glue. I mean, they're literally that simple. And then they just magnet right back on here for storage. So I love them. I think they're very easy. I, as you know, I used to use strip lashes, but since discovering Tori Bell, I mean, I'll never ever go back to strip lashes because these are just literally a complete game changer and they are so simple to put on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these put on and answer another question. All right, so my lashes are on. I'm gonna go ahead and pop one more coat of mascara on my bottom lashes. And the next question is points versus calories. Which have you had more success on? So I would say that if I'm following WW and counting my points, honestly, if I am following calorie counting, and counting my calories honestly, and I am tracking everything that goes into my mouth, I feel like my success has been equal on both programs. Now, I am still on WW, I just double track. And that's another question that I've gotten on a few videos is why would you continue to do WW if you're gonna count calories? because I love WW and for me, knowledge is power. And I wanna know how many points I'm eating every day versus how many calories I'm eating every day. I wanna make sure that I'm falling within my caloric range by working the WW program. And it's been really fun to kind of experiment and see different ways of working WW to reach my calorie goal. And I'm continuing to experiment and finding different ways to do just that. So for me, the extra five minutes it takes to double track is nothing. If you don't wanna double track that, you don't have to. I think both programs, WW, calorie counting, or a mixture of the two work if you work them fairly, honestly, and you track your food. I'm going to go with some bronzer next. So I use the Hula Beauty Bronzer from Benefit. It's a very matte bronzer. I love it. And I go ahead and start here on my forehead and I'll kind of bring it along my hairline and drag it down the T-zone part of my forehead. And then I will bring it kind of around by my eye. I get a lot of questions on how I apply my bronzer, so I thought I'd show you guys that. And then I bring it up across my cheekbone, just right under my eye, and then nose, and down my chin. And then lastly, I'm going to put it on my jawbone. So around my jawbone line, the bottom, not the top, but kind of under my jawbone, and it just really, really helps to shape your face. So that's how I apply my bronzer. Next, I'm gonna use the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I love this, you guys know this. I use this as highlighter. It smells amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my fan brush and apply that. And the next question is, how do you eat clean on a budget? It just seems so much more expensive. So first of all, you guys, eating healthy is more expensive. It is more expensive to buy fruits and vegetables and good quality meats than it is to buy packaged snacks. That is just 
the way that it is, unfortunately, that you can buy a bag of chips for a way less money than you can buy a fruit cup at a store, at a gas station, and that's unfortunate. But that's the world that we live in. So it is just going to cost you a little bit more money if you are going to eat clean. But I did an entire video on eating clean on a budget. I'm gonna link that down below for you guys. Highly recommend you watch it. I share tons of tips and tricks with you on how you can stay within a good grocery budget and eat clean, even including organic fruits and vegetables. Next is my Hikari. This is kind of like a blush bronzer in one. Yeah, I know. It's almost gone because I'm obsessed with this. And I use this as basically a blush, but also as a bronzer highlighter as well. So I kind of scooch my brush around to get all the different colors. There's four colors in this palette. And this I put under my cheekbone. So you can see that it's going on and serving kind of as a blush, but also gives a fun bronze look. So the next question is, do I have to stick to the recommended serving size of zero point foods? No, you don't. Like I said, you can eat as much of the zero point foods as you want, technically. In fact, WW says that you don't even have to track your zero point foods. However, zero points does not mean zero calories. So if you are trying to stay within your calories, then I recommend that you weigh and measure your zero point foods. If three ounces of chicken is not filling you up, it's certainly okay to have more chicken, track it as zero, but put those calories in and just make sure that you're within your calorie range, that you're not under eating and on the flip side, overeating, because you can also overeat the zero point foods. I did a video about a year ago talking about doing just that and tips and tricks on how not to overeat those zero point foods. So I'll put that video down below. There's gonna be a lot of videos down there for you, but it's important for us to revisit those videos if we've seen them in the past and it kind of helps answer a lot of our questions. So before I move on, I'm going to pull a little of the pink here and I like to just kind of put it on my eyelid before I move on to the next step of my makeup. Next, I'm gonna be using the Beauty Counter Rose Glow Highlighter Stick. You guys know I love this. And with this, I'm going to put it right under my cheekbone. Just a line right under my cheekbone. So it's very, very, very simple. And then I just take my finger and kind of blend it out a little bit. Next question is, by eating clean, are you also staying away from added sugar? So I'm not too concerned about sugar because with smart points, we are essentially penalized, if that's what you want to call it, for things that are high in sugar, whether it's natural or added sugar. So I don't really concern myself too much with sugar because in order for me to reach my protein goal every day, that has to be my focus. And most foods that are high in protein are low in sugar. So I find that naturally I'm eating less sugar in order to hit my protein goal. And I'm also finding that I'm eating less carbohydrates in general because more of my calories and my focus is going towards protein. But by choosing the clean approach to WW doesn't mean that I'm watching my sugar at all. If I wanna have something with sugar in it, I will. It's not really that much of a concern to me, but like I said, I tend to lean my calories more out towards protein so it lowers the sugar and the carbohydrates that I'm eating and I actually I eat a lot of healthy fats as well next is the cover girl this is the easy breezy brow and this is like a gel it's like a mascara and this is dark brown and I'm gonna go ahead and tame these beasts of eyebrows that I have so the next question is is it okay to eat under your calorie goal every day to lose weight faster and she was asking about the goal weight times 12. So like I mentioned earlier, you can reformulate that and do goal weight times 11 or goal weight times 10. Now I will say that if you are someone who's very, very active, going goal weight times 10 is probably not enough calories for you. So I would highly recommend that you stick with the goal weight times 12 or the goal weight times 11. Now, if you are someone that's a little more sedentary and you've given 30 days, 30 days, to the goal weight times 12 and you're not seeing any progress, then yes, I think that you could do times 11 or times 10. But the whole point of this is to maintain our metabolism. And if we severely under eat the calories that we should, we're doing the exact opposite of that. We're continuing to damage our metabolism. We may lose weight a little bit faster, but is that worth the long-term effects? of the damage to our metabolism and slowing that down and just really under eating is just not a good healthy decision. And it's also very hard when you get to goal and you add in more calories, your body fights back and you can often gain weight. And that is why losing at a slow and steady sustainable pace goal weight times 12 or 11 is really what is recommended. So next I'm gonna use this Kylie Jenner highlighter. This is the Santorini 
This highlighter is my all time favorite. I've had this you guys for over a year and it's full still because you hardly have to use any. It is a very intense, intense highlighter. I don't use it on my cheeks. I use this in the corners of my eye. So I generally just will pull right out of the lid here and pop it here in the corner of my eye. And it just really opens your eye, makes it kind of bright and it looks like you're more awake sometimes than you really are. So the next question is, what are your favorite high protein snacks? So I did talk a little bit about this. You guys know my love of cottage cheese and yogurt. I do a lot of meat sticks and beef jerky. I try to watch my sodium when it comes to those types of things because I can retain water pretty quickly. So I try to really watch my sodium, sodium on those snacks. I eat nuts sometimes. I'm not a big protein bar fan. I really like Built Bar, obviously, and they're just not available to purchase right now. And I also like the healthy eating all the time and go bars. There's about nine grams of protein in there. So not a lot, but they're a very clean, delicious bar. So if I'm leaning on a protein bar, that's kind of the direction that I'll choose. But to be completely completely honest with you, I try to limit my fake or artificial protein. It's not really even fake or artificial, but my protein that's not coming from real food, I try to limit that every day. So you're gonna see that I'll often have a protein shake using my Live Well protein powder, but you don't see me having a protein coffee or eating a lot of Built Bars or protein bars throughout the day. Unless I am not having that protein shake, then I will sub out with a Built Bar or another type of protein bar. But I try to limit myself to a not whole food protein to one time per day. I try to get most of my grams of protein from real food because I prefer real food. So my meats, my cheeses, my full fat dairy, and then I limit myself to those protein sources that come in processed or packaged foods to one time a day. That's just how I do it. Now, you, if you wanna eat Built Bars three times a day, feel free. That's just what works for me because I really try to take that real clean whole food approach. And I like to change up my like fake <laughs> protein sources between bars and protein shakes on a daily basis. So that's just kind of how I choose to work my protein. But those are some of my favorite snacks. I would say anything with five grams or more protein in a snack is a good choice. You could do cheese sticks, pepperoni. I mean, there's a lot of options out there for good, healthy, high protein snacks. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put on some lip color. And because I did a much more neutral eye today, just have the lashes and the liner, I'm gonna do a bold lip because bold lips are fun. So I'm gonna be using the Vibrant Red. You guys always ask me what lip color I have on when I wear this. I'm not kidding, you always ask. This is from Tori Bell. So the same company the lashes are from. They do have cosmetics as well. And I love this lip color. It is matte, so when you put it on, it just dries and it's beautiful and it lasts forever. So I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna take this and kind of wipe off the uh, makeup off my lips and we'll apply the lip color. So I got a couple of other questions. That's it as far as questions that are really, really focused on calories versus points. But I did get a couple of other questions, just more personal or YouTube related questions. So I thought I'd throw those in at the end here. Isn't this lip color stunning? I seriously love it and it's dry, it's matte. I love it so much. So a couple personal questions that I got is do I do YouTube full time? Uh, the answer to that is kind of. I do YouTube pretty much full time. I am a realtor as well in the state of Washington, so I do sell real estate, but I, my primary focus is YouTube. I love it. That's why I upload videos regularly. I try to remain consistent, give you guys lots of fun content and ideas because ultimately I would love to only do YouTube. I'm not there yet. I'm not able to financially do that. So by you guys subscribing and continuing to watch my videos and support my channel, that's how I can eventually hopefully be able to do YouTube full time. But honestly, when I started YouTube, it was to keep myself accountable and it's grown to be so much fun. I have such a great community. I love you guys so much. So many of you are my friends. We talk all the time. You're very supportive. It's amazing. So that actually is my favorite part. And the little bit of income that I do make from YouTube is fantastic. It allows me not to have to work a regular nine to five job so that I can put out more content for you guys. So there is nothing wrong with doing YouTube full time. If you want to start a YouTube channel and your goal is to make it a job, there's nothing wrong with that. It's totally okay. And you will hear sometimes other YouTubers will kind of bash that and say, oh, well, I don't do this to make money. Well, that's great, that's you. But there are a lot of people who choose to do YouTube full-time as a job, and I say more power to you. And if you can get there, way to go. You have really put in some blood, sweat, and tears because 
it's a rough job you guys it's a hard job it takes a lot of time a lot of patience you have to have a thick skin so yeah more power to you those of you that have made this your career the last thing i'm going to do is add some of the setting spray this is the Too faced do you fresh glow i love this it smells like watermelon it's amazing and i got one more question and i almost didn't want to answer this question because as you know, I really, really try to focus on positivity here on my channel. I don't like to bash other YouTubers. I don't like to bash other people. I don't seek out and desire to negatively affect the lives of other people here on YouTube or subscribers. I just want to be happy and share ideas and recipes and fun with you guys and make this a safe, positive place to be. But one of the questions that I got was how do you deal with the negativity and all the haters out there? So I will tell you guys that honestly, when it comes to subscriber negativity and maybe negative comments I don't get that many I mean I would say that maybe I could count on two hands over the course of being on YouTube that the negative comments that I've gotten and I don't feed into it if you haven't noticed if there is negativity out there that is about me or surrounding me or put on me by subscribers or other youtubers I just avoid the drama and the negativity I choose to act like an adult and just carry on and be positive and not feed into the drama. So I do exactly that when I get negative comments on my channel. I simply just delete them and I hide that person from allowing to comment on YouTube. Now you can't block people on YouTube. They can still watch your videos. They can still give you the thumbs downs. Those are the haters of the world that always give you a thumbs down. You can't control that. You can just block them from being able to comment and leave those negative comments. When it comes to other YouTubers, like I said, I just try to remain positive. It's hard sometimes to not fall in the jealousy trap or the clicky trap on YouTube where you bind together with a group of people and it becomes kind of a negative place and you may target or attack other YouTubers or subscribers even if you have subscribers in common that don't always appreciate your content it's easy to fall into that trap and be part of kind of a mean girls club and i just choose not to do that i kind of say to myself there are very few youtubers that i talk with but to be honest with you i don't have a youtube channel for other youtubers i have a youtube channel for accountability and for you guys i have it so that i can grow and build relationships with you so i can share tips and tricks with you so that i can bring joy to you that's why i have youtube is it great to have youtube friends sure of course it is. It's great to have friends in general, but it isn't why I have my channel. And I'm grateful for the YouTuber friends that I have, but I'm more grateful for the subscriber friends that I have because you guys are amazing. And you know who you are. People that I chat with, that I message regularly, you guys are the reason why I have YouTube. So I just, in a nutshell, try to remain positive, stay out of the drama, live my best life. That's kind of the approach that I take. So that's it, guys. That is the get ready with me calories versus points plus a few bonus questions thrown in there. I hope that this helped you guys out a lot and answered a lot of the questions that you have when it comes to the nitty gritty of points versus calories. I'm going to link a ton of videos down below for you guys as well as all of the products that I shared with you today that I can find. I'll make sure that I put those down below as well. That way you guys can get your hands on some of the fun makeup. Highly recommend these lashes, you guys. They are amazing. You saw how easy they are. So grab some lashes, grab some fun cosmetics, reach out with any questions that you have in addition to what I answered today. You can certainly feel free to leave those down in the comments. If you're new, I'd love for you to stick around subscribe. Make sure you're part of my channel. We are shooting for 30,000 subscribers by the end of the year and we are well on our way. So I'd love it if you'd make sure that you are subscribed and that your bell's turned on so you're notified when I do upload new videos. Also give this one a big thumbs up if you love these get ready with me Q and A's. If you love these videos, I'll do more down the road. There's always new people coming on board on WW or with calories that have lots of questions. So it's very, very easy to do these Q and A get ready with me's with different looks here and there throughout my journey. So I'm happy to do that for you guys as well. Don't forget about the description box down below where you're going to find the links for everything, the videos, all the discount codes to my favorite things. And of course the link to come over and join us over on Facebook. It is so fun. You guys, we have such a positive supportive 
community over there. I get comments at least once a week from someone saying that they're so grateful they found my Facebook group because it's positive and they tried to eliminate the negative groups that they were in off of their little Facebook group list and they're happy to be part of a supportive, positive place because we are all about that on my Facebook group. So head over and join us. Thanks again, guys, for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much and I'll see you all next time.